Welcome, my brothers and sisters and kings and queens and gods. Thank you for tuning in to the House of Ra. I'm Minister Ra. And I have a very important message. And this message is about white race the black race and the warning that we need to heed this is 2020 year of clear visions okay uh, we're in the midst of a paradigm shift okay now this is very important that we understand what's actually going on okay now first I want to start off with this little story I always reflect on my life because my life and my journey pay uh, 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 my journey is is part of what is a, a accumulating at this moment with my path and your path anytime you visit this channel you were sent here I'm not looking for hundreds and thousands of views. I'm looking for those who see something that they need in their life and that they belong. There's some of us out here with these thoughts of understanding something is not right. This is your home, the house of Ra, the house, me casa, your casa. Okay, with that being said, let me go on with what I was saying about my path. When I was a young child, and as far as I can remember of my past as a as a youngster, I mean, I'm, I'm talking around about three and four and five years old. Now, when I was about three, four, five years old, my world was uh, beautiful. My parents and my grandparents, I didn't know what rich was. I did not know what poor was. Based on my other brothers and sisters, they say we was poor. Never in a time or in my experience, I was ever poor, nor was I ever rich. I was happy and rich in love, you understand? But see, I was living in the projects. I was a young guy. I ate. My mother loved me. My grandmother, I was raised with my grandmother all the way up until I was seven years old. But what I'm trying to say is I never had a racial issue with white people. I thought that I thought that everyone was treated like family. My neighbors were black folks, but we were like families in my eyes. I never saw a separation other than the homes we live in. You have to understand. I, I didn't know what racism was. I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. I lived in Washington, D.C. And that was known at one time, the chocolate capital of the world. It was known as Chocolate City when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Okay. So, but I didn't know anything about racism. I didn't even know anything about white folks did this and white folks did that. You understand? Because I came into this world with a free spiritual understanding. You know, children understand a lot more once they come out and you leave them alone. They tell you the truth. They will speak truth. But when they are convoluted in religion, convoluted in the history of lies, they begin to take on a different imprint other than themselves. But I appreciate my mother for not making me go to whatever religion she was attending. She gave me free reign, free choice. And I took that and I began to move and investigate. But my point is, I never had any Feel, feel, feel feelings for white folks 
You understand what I'm saying? I never had any feeling towards white folks. Now, I saw a video. I'm just telling you my perception. I didn't have this. I wasn't raised up in that in that imprint initially. But I saw a video where two black kids, I would say they was three years old, and they saw each other and they ran. It was like on a city block. And it was a white kid and a black kid. And they ran to each other. And it was so precious. And they hugged. Hugged like brothers. Hugged. And what set into my mind is racism is taught. Racism is taught. We are not we we were we were not racist or prejudiced or any of those things when we came out of our mother a womb as that free as that free spiritual being. You understand? Racism is taught. Now let me shift gears to an, an, another uh, historical uh, eyewitness to Malcolm X. Malcolm X was a Muslim, and he was the leader or the, or the spokesman for the Nation of Islam. And the Nation of Islam at one point was calling white folks the devil. The white folks is the devil. Because of what was going on in the world that white folks was doing. So they was known as the devil. And Malcolm X uh, honed his message on such notion as white folks the devil. Now, doing his own self-check in his house of Islam, he realized that he had to take a journey to Mecca where he had to see for himself Muslims. And when he went to Mecca, he came to find out that there were Muslims of all ethnic Racist. He saw white Muslims, black Muslims, Arab Muslims, African Muslims, and it opened up his eyes and he realized, he realized that these were his brothers. Malcolm had a lot of pull, influence on the African American people. I'm going to use the word African-American. It really doesn't apply because African-American is just two continents. But for the sake of words, uh, on that community. So when Malcolm came back, he had already denounced Islam, the house of the, the, the Muslim, the, uh, um, yeah, the Muslim movement. He, he denounced it and he was willing to work with anybody to advance a unified equality and fight for what is right. That's what Malcolm was doing when he came back from Mecca. He did not exclude a race, anybody who could come and help this movement. And because Malcolm had the influence and the oracle to do this, to bring people to him, the system decided to get rid of him, you see. But Malcolm woke up, you see what I'm saying? So now we have a, a people out here in recent time called the, the, the Israelites, the black Israelites. And they're going into this Bible and looking at Jacob and Esau, and I explain to you what Jacob and Esau represent. These Hebrews who, who claim themselves heirs of the true Jews is a metaphysical book. There's no way you're going to put yourself in the Bible because it's a fairy tale of lessons. But when you take these things literal, how dangerous it can be how dangerous 
these things can be. So, with that being said, with that being said, these these black Hebrews are spewing this hate among white folks. They saying that the Most High is going to destroy the devil again. They pushing this against the devil. Now, I used to study with the black Hebrews. This is when I was fine, looking for myself, finding my path. Because I had to leave religion. I, I, I studied religion, theology, and I come to realize this is not feasible. This didn't make sense. All of these organizations, one book, thousands of two. And then I elevated myself to the Hebrew Israelites because I was still in the book. And I looked in there, and I looked at old, and I saw church all over it, all over again, because they had different beliefs, belief systems. I can't go down. I can't get down with belief system. Either you believe one way, or you believe another way. It caused divisions among certain camps. I had to let that go. I had to let that go. And then I come to understand what spirituality. I woke up and realized who I am and who you are. We just have to get and peel those layers of false history and 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 uh, things that have been taught to us. Peel that layer of onion off of you as I have done. Now, this warning I want to give is to to, to bring together black and white relationships. Is it easy? No, because we have, we have two different um, understanding. Black folks and white folks, because of this system, have imprinted upon us that we're different. Yes, we are different only in skin. And skin is the fact that we both bleed, we both die, we both have issues and, and struggles at some point. We want to raise families. We all, we have all of that in, 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 in uh, all of that in common. You understand? So, my point is, I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, kings and king, kings and queens and gods, the system. Is pitting black folks against white folks and white folks against black folks. You know why? Think about it. Think about it. When we are clashing against each other, the white folks are a buffer for the black folks. The white folks is being used and manipulated as a buffer for the Hispanic brown folks. The white folks are being a buffer for the yellow folks, Asians. The white folks are a buffer to the native or red man, as it were, a buffer. And why is they used as a buffer? The buffer is to keep each other occupied, occupied, why? The reason for the occupation or occupying our time on this racial issue is to keep us busy enough for the man in the curtains, the man in the, the, the those who we don't see. I'm trying to tell you, the machines and the matrix. And we don't understand that we're they're using us so that we can be so busy into racial president, all of this crap politics. Just to make sure we're not sitting down and thinking and thinking and realizing and using our critical thoughts and thinking ability. And so while we are at each other trying to find a common ground, they are doing things to prepare for our demise of the black folks. And the, yellow, and the white folks. Because the white folks were slaves before we 
uh, Native Americans and all was were slaves. It was white folks. White folks were 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 the were the slaves of the, of the white man. They owned people. They enslaved them. This is historical history of truth, which they don't teach in school. But do your research. I don't believe anything that comes out of my mouth because I've done my research. But I'm preaching and teaching and enlightening you to think. I want to you. I want you to begin to think outside of the box, brothers and sisters. Outside of the box. So while they work in certain things for our demise and our control, we have to come together. We have to come together. Now, it's up to, you know, in, in my experience, I'm 50, 55, 56 years old. I don't keep up with my age. <laughs> I really don't. I don't keep up with my age. It's a non factor to me. But my point is, we, we're, we have to come together and understand the enemy is not white folks and black folks. We have to look a little bit higher, the machines, the men behind the curtains. You see what I'm saying? I'm dropping some gems. I'm dropping some Jews, brothers and sisters, where these uh, racist skinheads they, they, and Ku Klux Klans and Klans and, and all hate groups of a race, we got to stop it because the enemy is not you and I. The enemy is someone we don't even pay attention to. And they are the ones who perpetuate these type of things, you understand? They got it's to the point where they were shooting black folks, cops, white cops would shoot black folks in the street, innocent people. And it was going on during the during the uh, uh, President Obama, the first black, pre second black president in the United States, the first black president of the United States, the very first black president is Black History Week. So I, I, I'll give you some black history in this. Was John John Henson? John Henson was the first president and he was a black man. Look on a $2 bill. You'll see him on a $2 bill. The only black sitting in what was will be Congress. See, they try to hide that little, that little, that little historical point. But they put it in there because it's real. You got to understand that. You got to understand it. Now, Let's go back to this understanding how we have to come together. Think about it. All civilization been traced back into Africa. Every civilization is rooted in Africa. There's not a white person without African blood in them. Not one white person without the trace of African DNA in their blood. Back in the time when uh, uh, the um, POW, I'm calling them prisoners of war, but we, we know them as slaves, but we was POW, prisoners of war. When we was prisoners of war, these, the white folks, oh man, I just lost my train of thought. I was going somewhere with this brother and sister. I don't, I don't edit anything because I let this. A download come down to me. But anyway, the point is we gotta to come together. Uh when the uh when the uh white folks allow the other half of the white folks to become servants. No, no, I'm sorry. They gave them jobs, overseers, managed the upper rich folks, uh POW prisoners of war, you see. And as time went on, the divide of us grew. And we lost track of the enemy. We lost track of the enemy. 
And we have to find our way back because we've been played. We are pawns on the chessboard. board. We are pawns on a chess board. Brothers and sisters, kings and queens and gods. We have to we have to get away from that. If they genocide the POWs off the planet, guess who's going to be the next slaves and and uh, mistreated people? It will be the next white folks that that they want to really put you as slaves. And when I say white folks, I'm talking about the ones who bloodline is not even of ours. This is the upper bloodline, the blue bloodline right here. We right here. And they all look at us as one people that they don't want to really deal with. We are not of their blood lineage or bloodline. So I don't care how much money you have, how prominent you may be in this system. If you're not in the family, you will never be in the family. You understand? Because they don't look up, look at us like that. These people are from a reptilian, hybrid, Caucasian, most often appearance, is running things. This running things, and, and this was the paradigm shift is it's about bringing back the unity and the love. Now the TV. It is the biggest propaganda box that was ever invented to brainwash the masses of people. And I'm going to tell you why it can, it's the most successful brainwashing uh, invention on the planet. Because the TV or the television or the tell lie vision, tell lies to your vision, has been the reason of the rift between black and white. The television put the image of white folks, cover the TV shows of white folks, and they sprinkle in another few of black folks. But if you're a two-year-old two year child, you start watching TV, you begin to see your kind, your reflection, always in position of teaching and learning and, and entertaining and in government and even today. The Caucasians are running primarily the governments, the institutions, the higher up education, they're running it. And if you're two and three years old and you see your people in these prominent positions, you begin to see yourself as perhaps superior. And black folks begin to see we're not running anything. And they're calling us we're not superior at all. They're calling us three-fifths or minority or we don't have a history. We, we, we're not respected as such. But the, the, the tide is changing just a little bit, but you have to prepare to look be, beyond the, the, the illusion. Because if you look at the black folks, we're about 70 to 70% 70 incarcerated. Then comes the Hispanics and about 3% of the white folks. Okay, The ones who go to war of these countries that were melanated black folks was on the front line. We're in a crisis because our people are being feminized. You see, I, I'm going to talk about that in a whole different, whole different subject. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to have to stop that down low, which is, which is right, because I'm not. I don't want to jump off the topic. But that box influenced our, our illusion about each other. You see, because it's a television vision that gives us a, that gives us programs. That's why it's called it a program. You see, I remember getting a TV guide when I was young, when when 
when TV about the uh, the seventies, late seventies, they had TV guys, and they said these are the programs that's coming on. Program the illusion. Imagine your brain is like a you come out of your mama and you your complete system, functionable system, and if it's just leaving you alone, you will come into your spiritual God like self. But they put the downloads from the tube and the radio and the news. The news is fake news. Turn that thing off. It's a tad lie vision. You're getting watered down stuff. You see, the news and the TV main objective is to to control your reality. We'll make this reality because they tell us what this reality is. They control our reality with the downloads, programs. Your brain is a computer. You got a virus in your brain. Most people got a virus. I'm telling you, because they've been taught these downloads that your brain don't need. It's just confusing. Them downloads brings about the ego. The ego. The devil. Get rid of that devil, that ego, and you'll be more successful, and we can unify better and understand each other better. In my experience with white folks in my life, I have never came across anyone who really outrightly disrespect me as a black man. I take that back. I won't want to go there. I don't want to have to go there right now. But I was in a situation where these people were just that way. But I'm not going to go right there. But from that situation, I never had a white person disrespect me. But I did begin to develop a dislike for white folks as a teenager based on the ill treatment of black folks during our prison of war moments on the farms, on the fields, and how we was treated like animals. And I began to sort of have a disconnect with white folks because I saw the pictures, I see the movies, I see and that's another tactic that they want us to make sure that we bump heads. But we got to see past that, brothers and sisters. My black brothers and sisters. My white brothers and sisters. My white kings and queens. My black kings and queens and my black gods. I mean, white gods. This is about coming into the house of rock, coming into the unity. You see, I don't care about views. I'm trying to find those who's on the same frequency. Because we're going somewhere, brothers and sisters. We're going somewhere. We, we're getting our vibration up. We're raising our vibration. We're going somewhere, brothers and sisters. When we raise our vibrations up, they can't touch you. Like MC Hammer said, can't touch this. <laughs> you can't touch this. You see. So, my warning is to my brothers and my black melanated brothers and my black family and my white family. We we got to come. You have to speak up in behalf of black folks, my white brothers and sisters, kings and queens. There's some good white folks out there fighting for us. Fighting for us. That's why I cannot take one person in the wrong white race and classify them all as evil or the devil. No more than a white person can look at our people and say by one or group that we all are like that. That's a misnomer. That's a misnomer. So, this great deception 
wake up from the dream. They want the, the TV offers only one main thing, and that is fear. Fear, you know what fear does to you? It lowers your frequency. It brings your frequency down. It makes you depressed. And when you depress, your frequency is lowered down. And when you are lowered down, you are easy, easily and acceptable to attack. Because these beings, these, there's, these uh, entities feed on fear. You ever notice that if you see a dog and he looks on your street and he's coming up to, up the street and he's checking you out because he off to, he ain't on the chain, all right? He's checking you out to see if you're scared. And don't you know a dog smell? A dog can smell fear. He can smell fear. And when he smells that fear, he's coming at you. But if you stay on your ground and you don't move and you look at that dog, he will not attack you. But if he got you on the run, good luck. Hope you make it on a car or on somebody's porch or somewhere. <laughs> because they smell it. These entities jumps on you when your mechanism, your aura is low and your frequency is low. Keep it up. Walk around in your kingship and your queenship and your true brotherhood and in your God state. In your God state. I'm not going to tell you too long, but I thought this message for the 2020 time for clear vision, 2020 vision. We got to, we got to, we got to wake up and smell the coffee, know the enemy, know the game, know how to play the game. The pawns on the, on the chessboard, the checkerboard, black and white. Hmm, interesting. Black and white board, checkerboard, well, chessboard, you see. See, a lot of, lot of, lot of understanding in, in those things I'm talking about. Um, I'm gonna say this last example. No, I'll say this for next time. <laughs> like I said, I'm not here to tarry too long on this House of Raw YouTube. I just want to bring you guys into the energy that's flowing, the energy that's flowing. So. Like I said, we got to wake up, we got to smell the coffee, and uh, bring about this um, bring about this um, paradigm change of love, joy, and peace. Love, joy, and peace, so that we can live on this planet in a joyful state, like you are with your intimate with your family. It's a global intimacy. We're going to use our talents that we didn't have to go to school for to make this planet a better planet. Because this planet is not going to accept this warlike nature on a planet. Gia is the planet name. Mother Nature, her name is Gia. Okay. And she's not going to tolerate this stuff too long. And I'm going to talk about that in another subject is a subject in, in itself so at this time i will say in the words of the ancient egyptian teachers of all mankind i have to bid you i say and in the realm of the spiritual nature of man your spiritual self that one the one that dwells inside the temple i want to say to you namaste my spirit bow down to your spirit. Thank you. Be strong.